Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to another episode of Super Gaming Minute, the channel dedicated to all things Nintendo and gaming. Super Mario 3D World, the next big Wii U title to get the Switch treatment, is out and in the hands of gamers all over the world. The final big release for the Super Mario 35th anniversary celebration is out and I want to talk about it. Now, there's a lot of talk back and forth when it comes to if it's worth buying up all the Wii U ports on the Switch or if it's just Nintendo looking to squeeze every last penny out of their faithful followers, which is where I come along. I picked up a copy of Super Mario 3D World on its release day and I thought that I would pick it apart and see if this is just another lazy port like Super Mario Bros U Deluxe or Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, or if it has enough new content with the likes of Bowser's Fury and within the main game itself to justify the $60 price tag. Well friends, come along on the journey as we meticulously pick apart one of the best rated Wii U games on the platform and see if it's a worthy title to sit on the shelves with some of our favorite Nintendo Switch titles and answer that question, is it worth it? But before we get into all of that, if you guys like all things Nintendo and gaming, do not forget to subscribe to SGM for more content like this. We release two new videos a week, and the only way to stay on top of everything we put out is to subscribe. Also, don't forget to like this video and share, and of course, comment down below if you think Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is worth the price paid, or if it's just another Nintendo cash grab. Okay, so this is a Mario game, which means it's full of rich storytelling and character development. Each new incarnation of the series is yet another chance for the developers to add to the Mario lore, and... Well, and I'm, I'm kidding, it's Mario. Bowser does some bad things, usually kidnapping someone. In this case, a bunch of Sprixies, which are fairy-like beings that, for whatever reason, Bowser decides they need to suffocate in Legend of Zelda-style jars. On a side note, why is it cool for Link to catch fairies in jars, but when Bowser does it, he's the bad guy? Just like most Mario Bros. platformer games, Mario and his friends, which include Luigi, Princess Peach, and Toad, must fight their way through eight worlds of danger in order to save the Sprixies and their world, I, I guess, from Bowser and his minions. It's so Mario, it's ridiculous. When it comes to the visual styling of the game, it looks absolutely gorgeous. The colors pop and the textures are clear and crisp. It doesn't look or feel very much different than the original version released on the Wii U, minus a couple of quality of life upgrades such as quicker running speed from the characters themselves, and little things that you wouldn't necessarily notice like being able to scale walls a little longer as Katsuit Mario. I suppose the biggest change would be an upscaling from 720p to 1080p, with the game obviously downscaling to 720 while in handheld mode, but that's a pretty obvious statement. Now while playing the main game, the frame rate is locked at 60 frames per second, but while playing Bowser's Fury, it can dip to 30 FPS while in handheld mode, but we'll get to more of that later. All in all, the Switch version is a bunch smoother and crisper to play than its Wii U counterpart, but that should have already been expected. Gameplay is where the game really shines. The 2D yet 3D type of gameplay is a really unique treat for fans of the series, bringing together aspects of both styles of Super Mario games and mashing them into one glorious outing. The overworld map is stunning, and with the ability to be able to run all over the map without having to stick to a single planned out route is a lot of fun. With different hidden objects and power-ups to find, it can be a lot of fun just exploring the overworld itself. When it comes to level design, the developers really went above and beyond. No two levels feel the same. With different styles of levels such as the main Mario style of level with inclusions like Plessy and Toad's Treasure Tracker levels and the return of Ghost Houses. Oh my god, why isn't anybody talking about the return of Ghost Houses, for real? Not to mention, even when the developers do the same thing twice, it's in a completely different style. No two levels look or feel the same and it's a real treat that definitely keeps you guessing and never feels old or stale. The competitive co-op in the game is a lot of fun too. With up to four players battling it out for the top spot, it can really add a different feel to the game than playing in single player. Being able to throw your competition around, steal the first place crown right off your friend's head in order to beat the level with it on your head and earn more points that add to the level and tally, plus more competitive features that have been added. But not only that, if you just want to play through the levels with a friend and enjoy the game together without trying to destroy one another, it's hard, but you can do that too. 
I recently played through the first couple of levels with my five-year-old and we had a blast. Sure, I had to carry her through most of the levels, but even still, she had a ton of fun and it was a great time playing together. The online co-op though? Well, like most online experiences with Nintendo, they can definitely use an upgrade. Lag is a term that I can confidently say. The issues seem to be the same as with games like Mario Maker. Nintendo needs to offer us better online experiences with these games. They should no longer get a pass on things like this just because the service costs less than, say, Xbox Gold. We still pay for it, dammit, we deserve to enjoy our online experiences. The controls in the game are great. They always are when it comes to Nintendo property. They're tight, responsive, and easy to grasp. They can feel a little strange though sometimes if you forgot that this is more of a 2D game than it is a 3D game. When you try to look around the world, just as you would in Mario Odyssey or Galaxy, but you can't quite look in a 360 degree space. But that's fine, this game isn't trying to be something that it's not. Now when it comes to jumping on platforms, I sometimes die by misjudging my jumps and where the platforms are. Also in underwater levels, when I try to hit a block with my head, I find that I'm not exactly under said block and have a hard time trying to line myself up with it. But I do see that as a personal issue and people who don't have terrible aging eyes like myself may not have the same issues or problems that I just listed. This is a port port of a game from 2013, but the main game itself already has a ton of gameplay and replay ability for every gamer, young and old, with 3 stars to collect in every main level plus the 5 stars in the Toad Treasure Tracker level plus the challenge levels, if you're looking to get every single star plus the hidden stamps in each level, you're looking at a healthy 25-30 to 30 hours of gameplay. If you're more of a casual Mario gamer, expect the game to last roughly 8-10 to 10 hours just to get from point A to point B. That's not all kids. No, that's not all. We have an entire other game to go over that comes bundled in with Super Mario 3D World. That's right, we still have to talk about Bowser's Fury. There have been a lot of speculation as to how fleshed out this game was going to be. Would it be just a cheap cash grab made to excite players who have already played the original Super Mario 3D World just to find out that it's an uninspired quick little playthrough with uninspired gameplay? Or was it a well thought out game with tons of gameplay and collectibles to find which would give us hours upon hours of additional gameplay with the likes of Super Mario Odyssey? Well it's actually somewhere in the middle. Now after spending a few hours playing through Mario's new adventure in Lake Labcat alongside Bowser Jr, I have to say that this additional content is really really fun. With a large expansive world to explore, plenty of cat shines to hunt down, 100 cat shines to be exact, and wonderfully bright open world exploration that does away with the traditional hub city type 3D platformer that connects you to the levels or worlds to explore in favor of a much open world more akin to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, although at a much, much much smaller scale with zero additional load times after the first load screen when starting the game, which can take some time to actually get into the game, but that's the price you pay when you have the free roam streamlined experience on the Nintendo Switch. The story, again, is pretty basic. Bowser turns bad, Bowser Jr. is upset and wants his old dad back, and leans on Mario to help bring Bowser back to his original evil yet goofy self. Lake Labcat looks gorgeous, with great use of color and good sized chunks of land to explore freely. It looks, plays, and runs wonderfully on the Switch in dock mode at 1080p and 60fps. Now, that being said, it does dip in quality when playing the game in handheld mode. The Switch may start to struggle even at 30fps, which is just another argument in favor of the possible Switch Pro upgrade in the future. The Switch is definitely starting to show its age with every new game that is being released. But I digress. It definitely isn't bad enough for me to start tearing the game or the Switch apart in this review. All in all, Bowser's Fury is a great game and more than I was expecting when it comes to additional content on an already full game. The game takes roughly between 4-7 to seven hours to complete. It doesn't feel like an expansion or even a DLC, it really does feel like its own game. And I hope that Nintendo uses Bowser's Fury as a starting point when it comes to Mario's next big 3D adventure. The thought of an open world 3D Mario game with no hub world in favor of a free roam expansive gameplay like Breath of the Wild is definitely something I'd like to see in the future. Future. So, 
is Super Mario 3D World worth the $60 price tag? Yes, I understand that this is a re-release of an older Wii U game that hasn't really changed since the 2013 release, minus a couple of quality of life fixes and some new textures. And I know that a lot of Wii U owners are upset that these games keep getting ported to the Switch in lieu of brand new adventures. I get that, but these people need to understand that the majority of people that are buying this game and other games that were ported on the Wii U never had the chance to pick it up. These ports are for them and the millions of people that own a Switch that have never owned a Wii U. This is one of the highest rated Wii U games on the system. Hell, it's one of the highest rated Mario games in history. If any port is to make its way onto the Switch platform, it should be this one more people need to play this game. On top of that, we got a completely new adventure in Bowser's Fury to play with additional hours of never before seen brand new gameplay. Yes, guys, yes. This game is absolutely worth the $60 price tag. Whether you've played it on the Wii U or not, this game has something new to discover for everyone. But it really doesn't matter what I think. What do you guys think of Super Mario 3D World? Are you happy that they ported this game from the Wii U? Were you able to play it when it came out in 2013? And what are your thoughts on Bowser's Fury? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on the Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury game and share the video with a friend who's on the fence about whether or not to pick this game up. Also, do not forget to subscribe to SGM for more content like this. We release two videos a week and the only way to be up to date with everything we release is to subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you had fun playing Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Keep fit and have fun. Wait, I mean, keep on gaming.